Well, today is uh, it's not a day that's selective, so we just have to stay in the group and recover and uh, look forward to the harder days to come. Well, another American from the Garmin team, Tyler Farah, has been very good in the sprint so far. We also caught up with him before the riders rolled out. Um, you know, you just kind of just tuck in for the long haul, eat and drink as much as you can. And, you know, it's still in the mountains, so for me, it's just getting through it. But at the end, it's flat, probably a sprint finish. Uh, we'll see. I think there's some pretty big climbs before that. Yeah, the last few kilometers are flat, but I think the, I think the sprinters are going to have a hard time making it to the finish in the front today. Now take a look at the general classification going into stage number six. Danilo DeLuca, the new overall race leader by five seconds over Thomas Lubquist to go all the way to the bottom of the page. Lance Armstrong, three and a half minutes off the pace as we enter a very unpredictable day in northern Italy heading to Austria. And you look down into the valley, still a towering peak surrounding this region. And this again, the scene from earlier today, Todd Gogolski, the attacks as you would expect. the pink jersey safely at the front of the main field. DeLuca wearing the pink jersey, the Mylia Rosa for the 19th time in his career. And if you ever wonder how is it that they get all their sponsors on here every day, they actually have a mobile vehicle where as soon as they know at the end of the stage what team is going to be what for the podium, they actually print these jerseys up special to get all the sponsors right on there so everything's just perfect. Ivan Basso, a little more than a minute behind DeLuca on the general classification. His team rode brilliantly through the mountains yesterday, setting the tempo and a blistering one at that for so long. Over the big climbs yesterday, Basso looked to be in terrific form. He was even taking some pretty big pulls late in the stage. And Basso is a guy who's ridden most of this Giro course. And he's certainly a guy to keep an eye on just a little more than a minute back here as we get into day number six. And the Peloton now a little more than four hours into this long day's effort. And still with a lot of LPR on the front there, just keeping a check on that breakaway. but. Definitely we saw yesterday Basso's team doing a lot of work for him on that climb as they came into the finishing few kilometers, actually the entire last climb. And uh, DeLuca just following the lead of the Liquigas squad as he didn't have as many guys who could do it for him. Now well, here is the profile of today's 248 kilometer stage from Bresanone in Italy to Meerhofen in Austria. The border indicated by the flags towards the left hand side of the graphic and they've already gone over the climb that averages four and a half percent. And now we're getting into what is an area that is a false flat section that will lead them to the base of the final climb of the day. The category one up to Hockrimmel. 
And that climb starts with just about 58 kilometers to go in the stage. Let's get you caught up to exactly where the race is right now. It is a breakaway group of five riders who are a little inside of 70 kilometers left to ride to the finish. And their advantage over the main field, right around five minutes, 45 seconds. The lead at one point was all the way up to almost eight and a half minutes. That's the largest lead any break has had so far at this year's race. And now, as you see this graphic, the lead is coming down. The margin shrinking to 5-12 for the five in the break. And those riders are Michele Scarpone of the Dicui Giovanni team. And he's the best place rider in the break on GC. It's 619 back. Guilherme Bonafont of the AG2R French team. He's at over 22 minutes back. Vasil Kirienka of the Case de Pagna team. He's 27 and a half minutes off the pace. Oscar Gatto, the Italian for ISD, is one of the men in the break, as is Caster, uh, excuse me, Casper Klosterguard of the Saxobank squad, well out of the picture. So those are the five men in the break. Last check, 5-12 in front of the main field. There in the white in the background there is Michele Scarpone. So really not a very dangerous breakaway for the overall contention as you've just gone through these guys. The closest one, six minutes, 19 seconds down in the overall classification. It's a perfect opportunity for the LPR team just to let these guys have a bit of a leash, not work too hard to bring them back because there's no major danger for the jersey here. Now this break finally galvanized at just about 57 kilometers into the stage, really. This is the only stage where it's taken this long for the break to really stick. But now these five working very well together inside of 70 kilometers left to go to the finish. One big cat one climb still to go. Will they survive? Will a break go from there? Will the peloton catch them? A lot of questions and the answers coming up. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. It is your real hair. It's your natural hair. You wash it, you cut it, you swim with it. Bosley is the world's most experienced hair restoration experts, having pioneered virtually every major advancement in the art and science of hair restoration. I'm very, uh, very satisfied, very happy with what I've done. This has got to be one of the best decisions I've made in my life, I'll tell you that. Bosley Hair Restoration is a relatively simple outpatient procedure. The results look completely natural, and it's affordable on nearly any budget. Call the toll-free number now to receive your free no-obligation information kit that will help you decide if hair restoration at Bosley is right for you. You don't have to accept going bald. Do something about it right now. Call 1-800-986-2945. That's 1-800-986-2945. Call now. Economic climate, you might think it's possible to get credit to buy a car. We have news for you. This is the best time in years to buy a car. Credit is available for most buyers. So see your local dealer who knows the market and can help you with financing that meets your needs. Vehicle quality and fuel efficiency have never been better. So head on into your local dealer and drive away with a great deal. This is the best time in years to buy a car. A message from your Colorado Automobile Dealers Association. Follow Lance Armstrong every day on the Giro d'Italia. Only on Universal Sports. We believe in cycling. Michael Phelps is up to the challenge now. And here he comes. He's going to be very close. Now six days deep into the Giro d'Italia and a leading group of five riders right now who have an advantage a little more than five minutes in front of the main field as they come up on the only intermediate sprint of the day. 
So points available here. These guys will gobble them all up. As we have just a little inside of 65 kilometers left to go to the finish now. And again, the five here, Scarpone, Bonafon, Kirienka, Gatto, and Klostergaard with Michele Scarpone at six minutes, 19 seconds back, the highest place rider in the group on the general classification. So Scarpone, a guy who can climb, a guy who some people thought might be more of a factor these last two days, but really didn't show himself, now making his first big move of the Giro by getting in this break. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a tough guy. He's a, sort of a classics rider who can also climb, and a lot of people really did predict that he would be more effective on those first mountain stages. And he really didn't seem to have what, uh, what many had thought, but he's out here in this break here today. He certainly has good form coming into the race. He showed very good form early in the season. And so he's a man to be reckoned with for sure. Well, the main field being led by the LPR Brakes team and near the front of the main field is Lance Armstrong. The rider who's lost a couple of minutes the last few days with the first two summit finishes of this year's Giro d'Italia, sitting about three and a half minutes back on GC as we get into our sixth day of racing. And joining us now is Lance's coach, Chris Carmichael, who is still in the U.S. Chris, first of all, thanks for joining us. And let's start off by just giving me some general impressions of Lance's performance so far versus the expectations you guys had coming into his first ever Giro race. Really, uh, really good at how Lance was riding. Um, you know, he, he had this crash where he broke his collarbone. Um, that was, you know, just about six weeks ago. Um, that made things much more difficult and kind of complicated because he had to recover from that and then get back to training. Um, you know, I think uh, given the fact he's uh, been able to being that in the first uh, quarter of the field on, on the two uh, mountain stages had so far is a good indication he, he's in good shape, but I expect him to, uh, to get stronger as the race goes on. And Chris, uh, you know, you've been coaching Lance for a long time, starting back in the early 90s. He's, he's 37 now. He just took three years out of competition. And... Uh, First of all, like physiologically and in terms of his VO2 max and his, his threshold, how much change have you seen from the old Lance to the new Lance? Well, you know, um, there's a few things that we, we've seen um, from some of the training we've done and, and uh, the um, You know, his power at threshold is not what it was at uh, during the, the peak of his career. Uh, but, you know, we have to remember he's just now coming back. Um, this is his, basically his fifth race back in, in uh, three and a half years. And, um, you know, he's continuing to adapt to the training stress, meaning when he first went to the Sonic Team Camp in, in December, he got stronger afterwards. Then he went to the Tour Down Under his power went up. And then after the Tour of California, he, he adapted and, and his power went up as well. Um, same thing when we went to Aspen in, um, in April after this uh, collarbone break, his, he continued to get stronger. So, uh, you know, he's, he's not obviously at where he was during his peak, but he's not, he's not that far off. And the question is, will he continue to get stronger and continue to adapt? And and if that's the case, then, you know, that's, uh, that can be really, really interesting for where he might be in, in six weeks from now. And, and that's exactly my question to you. Obviously, after a three-week Grand Tour, his fifth race back, he's going to be extremely fatigued, deeply fatigued. So you're going to prescribe as his coach some serious rest. Uh, but do you think he's going to bounce back and be that much stronger yet again for the Tour de France? Well, that's what we're hoping. Um, is you know after after this uh, the, the Giro, um, he's going to need a, some recovery. But I anticipate him, um, you know, training effect from the Giro, meaning getting stronger, gaining more power, losing a little more upper body mass. Um, and you know, if we see that training effect and, and we see that physiological adaptation. You know, it, uh, we're expecting that to, to bring him up to a, another level, and hopefully that's the, the level that he was at uh, 
you know, when he when he won the Tour de France seven times. But that's hard to say, you know. I mean, it's, we're expecting it, but, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, at least that's what I would like to expect in, in everything now. You know, maybe he doesn't get that effect. Maybe, you know, he's, he's reached his hand and we're not going to, we're not going to see that. Um, hard to say. Chris, uh, we talked a lot about the physiological response here. Let's talk a little bit about the mental and psychological Lance and compare him to pre-retirement versus back into racing again. And, and where are we now? Well, uh, Lance, very motivated. Um, you know, you have to remember the number one reason why he is back to uh, racing competitively is for his Live Strong initiative and to take that to take that uh, initiative globally, and um, he really wants to make sure that, that the entire world is is embracing, you know, this 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 battle against cancer. So he's he's best able to do that as an active athlete to meet with heads of state and and raise awareness, raise funds, things like that. That's his number one uh, reason for for coming back. And number two, uh, he's a guy um, that clearly to help uh, and be supportive of, of his teammates. And, and you know, he's tagged Levi as a, uh, the, the guy that's got the, the best shot to potentially win the, the, the Giro, and he's going to call his full support behind that. And if he's not the guy for the Tour de France, he's obviously going to throw support behind Levi or Contador or you know, who, whoever else on, on his team looks like the best guy. All right, well, Chris Carmichael, we appreciate the time today. Thanks very much, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care, guys. All right, the coach of Lance Armstrong, who we saw just a moment ago, Chris Carmichael, joining us. He is in the States. Lance is obviously in Italy, riding his first ever Giro d'Italia. Can he recover as the race goes forward? He's had these last two tough days in the mountains where he's lost some time, but by his own admission, he believes he'll get stronger as the race goes on. He says the first half of the race really isn't for him. Yeah, you know, Steve, it's, it's interesting to talk with the coach because you and I have had speculation about Lance also, and it sounds like even Carmichael is speculating about Lance. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Is he going to continue to get better as he pushes himself, or is he going to reach that maximum all of a sudden and, and run up against that brick wall? And the only way to find out is to let time play out. Now, five-man breakaway again, just around five minutes in front of the main field, and they're coming up on 60 kilometers left to go in today's stage number six. Michele Scarpone, Guillaume Bonafon, Vasil Kirienka, Oscar Gatto, and Kasper Klostergaard. The five riders and the lead now down under five minutes to 442 over the main field, and still one more big climb to go, a cat one at Hawk Rimmel. As the race is now in Austria, it will stay in Austria the rest of today, start in Innsbruck tomorrow before crossing into Switzerland and ending back in Italy at the end of Stage 7 tomorrow afternoon. Stage 6 underway, rolling along under sunny skies and along beautiful waterfalls here in northern Italy and Austria. pursuit of the World Cup title for the second time. It's a really tough season, but in the overall, it's one of the toughest things to do. Whoa, that was scary. It was an exclamation point on my victory. Coming to the bottom of the hill. Lindsey Vaughn moves in the first. I feel really lucky to be able to have won it twice now. Universal Sports. Look the world. What? Soar to unimaginable heights. The ultimate risk taker, Jeff Hardy. And dominate Friday nights. Who's gonna stop the big show from doing whatever the heck he wants? Now, let the WWE superstars of Friday Night SmackDown into your home on my network TV. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Friday Night SmackDown. Witness all the action. All the excitement. All the unbelievable moments of Friday Night SmackDown. Friday at 7 on My 20.
one hundred and ninety four riders taking the start earlier today for this second longest stage of this year's Giro d'Italia and this five man breakaway we're looking at right now really forming itself at the fifty seven kilometer mark into the race and now we're coming up on just about sixty K left to go with Lance Armstrong the second Astana rider there in your picture, Chechu Rubiera, taking care of him as he has the last couple of days. And several of the Astana riders clustered together here. And it's interesting to note they're still wearing their kits. We were told that they may be wearing new kits coming forward beginning today. They said they were supposed to arrive at the team hotel yesterday. Astana has run into financial troubles and the team may change hands. Lance Armstrong may be taking over, bringing on new sponsors. They've been given a deadline of May 31st to get their sponsorship and financial troubles sorted out. Otherwise, they'll have their Pro Tour license suspended. And the word is that even if it's not today, maybe sometime in the next few days, Estana may be changing to completely different kits to at least signify that a change is coming. They may not have all of the sponsorship details worked out, but that would at least signify that a change is imminent with the Astana team. Yeah, change is certainly in the air for that squad, and we nobody really knows exactly what that's going to be, but I suspect here in the next week we're going to have a lot better idea if the if the license of the team is going to change maybe to the hands of Brunel, there was speculation about that, or if it's just going to be some other change with some sponsorship. And all we can do is speculate. Certainly everybody holding their cards quite close to their chest. In fact, I asked the question of Chris Horner last night after dinner if he could tell me anything. And he said, Todd, uh, yes, there is change. And no, I can't tell you what it's going to be. No, not after you two had dinner, after he had dinner, correct? After yes, he had dinner. Yes. You two, you guys weren't breaking bread last night, right? No, we uh, I didn't think so. Now, I haven't seen much of Garmin the last couple of days after Todd and Farah challenged in the early sprints, but really no surprise. Aqua and Sapone with some guys as Liquid Gas also riding near the front as well. And we're getting close to that final big climb of the day here and so now a little bit of a jostling for position here any team that uh, maybe has aspirations to try and do something on this final climb remember it's a fair distance from the top of this climb into the finish about 20 miles so a lot of time for things to come back together but still riders if they want to have the option of following attack or or having some room to slide they need to be up here and we see Lance close to the front and it's right where he wants to be he had a little trouble yesterday he had a little trouble the day before you start at the front and then if you can't quite maintain the pace you can drift back it's a big group and you can still maintain maintain contact if you're in a little bit of trouble now the race leaving the Dolomite Mount Mountains behind after two hard days the first two of six summit finishes all together at this year's Giro so a lot of weary legs in the peloton today a lot of the GC guys recovering and that's one of the elements that makes the finish of today's stage six so unpredictable because a break may survive or they could be picked up near the end we could see the counter attacks and maybe somebody survives outside of that with now 440 separating this main field from our five riders up the road so many unknown quantities to a day like today because it's so long and because we're coming out of two hard days in the mountains and Scarponi, the best man in the breakaway there and the breakaway looks like it's on that climb and riders already in trouble in the very bottom the isd rider at the back there certainly hurting already and that is gato he's got a good finish but he's not known for his climbing. Also, it looked like Closter Guard coming off the back. In fact, we're down to two now. It is yeah, Scarponi yeah, and Kirienko. Kirienko. Yeah, Kirienko also having a little trouble. So early in this final climb, uh, Scarponi putting a little bit of pressure on the others. A little surprising not to see them stay together to work together for a little bit longer, but maybe Scarponi really feeling that nobody has it in their legs. Now it's down to three riders. That looks like the second group of the, yeah, it is. Those are the three who've been dropped. And so these guys now chasing, laboring very hard on the front, the Frenchman Bonafont, as he tries to pull up the other two back to the lead. And there's our gap, not very big. 
but still very much at the bottom of the climb, so probably not very likely that our three chasers are gonna make it back up there. Now, break of five is split into two at the front, three in behind. It is Vasil Kiryenko on the Costa team riding first wheel. Mikhail Scarpone now coming through. He's going to take a pull at the front and being dropped behind Bonafon, Agato, and a cluster guard. Now, Mikhail Scarpone at 619 down on the general classification as the day began. We mentioned he's a guy who can climb. How worried will the Peloton be about where he is right now? I don't think they're going to be worried at all. He's far enough down, and they're, they're only about four minutes and change in front. We know they're going to continue to lose time. They'll lose time on this climb, and they'll lose a lot more time on the run-in. And look at this, Aquan Sapone, maybe not be worried about the breakaway, but they are certainly setting up something here. Could they be trying to spring somebody or possibly just helping out some other Italians in the form of the LPR squad? Now, liquid gas, pretty attentive here. As once again, we've seen our first significant move in terms of the members of the break. The five men who went clear and established themselves as the primary break of the day at 57 kilometers in. And now here we are, right around the 60K to go mark. And it's now down to two and then three in pursuit. So these two riders and then a group of three followed by the main field. There's still quite a large gap back to the field. But yeah, you can see our three pursuants here starting to splinter, and they certainly are losing additional time. So it looks like they're not gonna be able to make it back up. That makes a lot of sense. If you get dropped at the bottom of the climb, you're probably not gonna catch back up later. They're now 18 seconds behind, and right on the front, the man who's been very, very impressive earlier today, and uh, or excuse me, earlier this season, and we'll see if these two can hold on to the finish. Yeah. Michele Scarponi in the white there, the 29-year-old who won Terreno Adriatico this year, also a former winner of the Setmana Ciclista Internacional race. Vasil Kirienka, the man behind him, the 27-year-old Belarusian time trial champion from several years ago, and also a guy who won stage 19 of last year's Giro d'Italia. And there is the leader of this year's edition, Danilo De Luca in pink. Uh, Kirienko is kind of an interesting character because he's he's had a lot of strong time trial results and DeLuca very, very smooth here as he continues up the climb. But back to Kirienko, very strong time trialist, but he also splits his career by doing a lot of racing on the velodrome. And he's got a lot of good results in the velodrome event. So he does both. Now the category one climb up the Hawthorimmel that tops out just at about 45 kilometers left to go to the finish. The Peloton starting to make their move, starting to get out of the saddle. This is a cat one climb, final one of the day on stage number six. Here's a special free offer for men who are losing their hair. My hair always looks great and I feel great. If you want to look better, if you want to feel better about yourself, Hair Club is the way to go. Men, you know that getting your hair back will make you look good and improve your self-confidence like no diet or exercise program. It's a proven fact that having a thicker, fuller head of hair makes you look and feel younger, healthier, and sexier. You can get your hair back just by calling Hair Club. Call now. I'm 52 and I look better now than I did when I was in my 40s. Becoming a member of Hair Club for Men is the best investment in my career I've ever made. Hair Club offers all proven hair loss solutions, including surgical and non-surgical options, available through our network of physicians. With more than half a million success stories over the last 30 years, Hair Club can also help you get your hair back. Invest in yourself. Call now. What separates us from all the other hair loss companies is that only Hair Club provides all the proven technologies and solutions for hair loss that are available. The reason why I went to Hair Club was because of the great quality of work, the experience of the doctors and the medical staff, and the great patient care. They really took care of me. And the results 
are fantastic. When you call right now to book your free no-obligation consultation, we'll also give you a microscopic hair and scalp analysis, a $250 value absolutely free. We'll measure the extent of your hair loss, explain what causes hair loss, and our hair loss experts will show you all the tested proven solutions we offer. I'm very happy that I have a full head of hair. I feel healthy and great, and it's the best decision I've ever made. Hair Club is the only company that can offer you a customized solution based on your unique type of hair loss. Get the look you want that women love. If you want to look younger, feel better, and get a full head of hair again, call Hair Club today. I wish I would have done this 20 years ago. It's so worth it. Call them. Just call Hair Club. Hair Club has worked wonders for me. Why wait? Call now for your free information kit and find out how you can get your hair back. The call is free. The information is free. The consultation is free. Why wait? Call now. A special kind of viewer here in News Station. Viewers like ours. It never fails right at 7 o'clock on the dot. People are pulling through. I'd rather give to my news than the people who need it. You helped feed Colorado giving nearly 200 tons of food. Those donated pencils and notebooks made all the difference. You made business thrive in our state. 90,000 of you took that first step to living a healthier life. Help save lives just by making a buddy, all while honoring who you did it for. You've proven that the classroom is more important than we ever thought. You have shown us the future is brighter than we'd ever imagined. You've stopped criminals before they even got a chance to strike. Helped save your planet and your money all in one stop. You and Nine News. Inspiring Colorado. These other riders suffering at the back. Now leading up the sprint here. He can taste it, but here they come. You can see the pain in his body. Here comes the killer. He is going to take the victory. Giro d'Italia, only on Universal Sports. We believe in cycling. The beautiful Alpine region of southern Austria. The finish site for stage six of the 2009 Giro d'Italia. Steve Schlanger with Todd Gogolski. These are the two riders who are at the front of the race right now. Michele Scarpone, the Italian for the Dicui Giovanni team, and also the Belarusian for the Case de Parn team, Vasil Kirienka. Two riders who were originally part of a five-man breakaway. They've dropped their three breakaway companions, and now it's just these two riding out front with a lead of a little more than four minutes over the main field itself. And approaching the climb of the Hoff Rimmel, the Category 1, second of two categorized climbs of the day. That comes just about 200 kilometers into a 248K stage, our longest stage of this year's race so far. It's going to be a bit of a testing here once again on this climb, even though there's certainly a possibility of a field sprint. I think that some of the guys are going to put in a little bit of an attack here on this climb. They're going to start to try and stretch some legs. And especially somebody, maybe if, if, if you were hurting yesterday on that mountaintop finish, today's the type of day to look for an advantage to try and maybe slip away. Now record snows in this part of Europe over the course of the winter and now an extremely warm spring. There's been a lot of snow melt and as a result a lot of water tumbling down these alpine hills so far here in the month of May. Yeah, right in the middle of your screen, screen you see in the white jersey Lofis, the best young rider sitting in second overall and just in front of him is Columbia High Road teammate Blossenhagen. As Blossenhagen sheltering Lofis. Now coming off of the two summit finishes the last two days, the GC contenders really getting an opportunity today to calm down, settle in, relax a bit, try and recover as these two are 30 seconds ahead of the riders that they drop the three back down the road, Klostergaard, Gatto, and Bonafon. And most of those GC threats, like DeLuca, Menchov, who's our new leader, Levi Leipheimer, they're all pretty much saying the same thing, that they don't expect another big selection in this race to come until one week from today in that Chiquitere time trial of 61 kilometers. That's a week from today, next Thursday. They think between now and then that it's pretty much going to be status quo. They will all try and remain near the front of the main field, stay out of danger, but they think that's where the next big move is going to be made in this year's
this race. It's going to be real important for any of those overall contenders to get as recovered as possible for that time trial. And so that means staying out of the wind, not trying any crazy attacks, just being sheltered, eating a lot, drinking a lot, really looking after that recovery. Now, Aqua and Sapone, the several riders here in the main field near the front of the race and actually driving the pace at the moment, Astana with several guys in there as well, just behind. Also caught a glimpse of the green jersey that, by the way, today is being worn by Dennis Menshov. And the green jersey here at the Giro d'Italia indicates the leader of the King of the Mountains classification. Menshov, as you probably know, actually is second on KOM. Danilo DeLuca is first, but because he's also the overall race leader, DeLuca, with that pink jersey, that takes precedent over the green jersey. So DeLuca wearing pink, Menchov is in the green, Thomas Lopquist is in the white jersey as the best young rider, and Alessandro Pataki wearing the purple jersey as the sprint leader. And Levi still looking very comfortable. Also, we saw Horner just up the road from him, a few wheels in front. Horner's having an incredible race so far. And uh, speaking with Chris yesterday, once again, after he had his dinner, uh, he said they're just really going to play it conservative. Their whole team is kind of on a short leash right now. And Horner feels that they have the best time trialist in the world in this race right now with Levi Leipheimer. Uh, certainly, maybe the only point of contention there might be from Contador, but he's not in this race. So uh, they're going to try and put a lot of eggs in the time trial basket for the Cinque Terre stage as back here to Michele Scarponi, 29 years of age. And this is his second year on this Di Giovanni squad. And uh, I think uh, his, his victory in Torino Adriatico earlier this year really was a result of a strong time trial performance, but also beating out Basso and Garzelli on the Queen stage. Basso surged to the top of the climb, and the only riders who could follow him were Garzelli and Scarponi, and then Scarponi took the sprint. So he's had an incredible, incredible year. He certainly looks very good here today. Now our leaders, Scarponi and Kerenka on the Cat 1 climb of the Hockerimmel in Austria. Now this is a 13 kilometer climb, gaining almost 800 meters in elevation. The average gradient a little under 6%. The max though is 12%. Now from kilometer 6 up to the finish, the gradient is somewhere between 7 and 8%. So there are some sections of the climb that will sting, but the really interesting thing about where the climb sits in the overall race profile is once you go over the top, you still have about 40 kilometers to the finish. So that's what really can change the outcome of the stage. And there right there is Garcelli. That's the reason why the, bar, the uh, Aqua and Sapone squad is on the front as Garcelli having a quite an off day yesterday, losing a lot of time, and he's got his team just going a pretty tough tempo right now on the front of this field. And this climb, 800 meters, it's approaching 3,000 feet of vertical gain. Nice shot of Basso with Horner. And uh, Boasenhag in there is the Columbia High Road rider. Yaroslav Popovich, the Astana rider, who just went out of your frame. And hello, DeLuca, there in the pink, sitting right off the right shoulder of Ivan Basso, DeLuca. Always with a lot of confidence and says that his condition right now at this year's Giro d'Italia is as good, if not better, than what he had in 2007 when he won his only other Giro. And his actual quote yesterday after the race was something I actually loved. He says, with how I feel, let me repeat, I can win whatever bike race I won. That's uh, pretty much putting it out there, guys. I'm your target. Oh, we have a move being made now. Yeah, it looks like Aquan Sapone on the attack. Could it be Garzelli? Now the Aqua and Sapone team was running at the front of the main field here. Now on the Hawk Rebel Club, trying to take advantage of the severity of the slope. And, and there he is, Garzelli. number one, Stefano Garzelli, the 2000 Giro winner. Trying to make up for some disappointment in the mountains. And 
Garcelli actually started his career out as a domestique for Marco Pantani, but he put that to rest after he won the 2000 edition of the Giro d'Italia, so he's gone on the attack. Now the question is, can he get across to these two, Scarpone and Kerienka, who now have three kilometers left to go to the summit of the Category 1 Hawk Rimmel Climb in today's Stage 6 of the Giro d'Italia on Universal Sports. Are you one of the millions? This really is a great program. I believe that you can learn any language with this program. So call now or visit our website and see for yourself why Rosetta Stone is the fastest way to learn a new language guaranteed. Did you get... Did the insurance company send a doctor who gives you no attention? Well, I have good news. The workers' compensation law has changed. Now you have a say in which doctor treats you. Now you can get rid of a doctor you don't like. To find out your rights, contact me, Brian Moore, at 377-5959. I've handled workers' compensation cases for 38 years and gotten millions of dollars from my clients. At this year's Nine Health Fair, over 85,000 people got to know their numbers and made their health priority number one. Hi, I'm Denver Mayor John Hickenlooper, and I just want to take a moment to say thanks. Thanks to all the volunteers who worked so hard to make the Nine Health Fair happen. And thanks to everyone who visited the health fair. Staying healthy, living the dream. Quest Diagnostics, dedicated people improving the health of patients through unsurpassed diagnostic insights and innovation. A proud sponsor of Nine Health Fair from the very beginning. Our two leaders taking on some uh, fluids here with just about two kilometers left to go to the summit of the Category 1 Hawk Rimmel Climb. Second significant climb of the day. There's the green line indicating where they are right now. The average gradient just under 6%. However, the closer you get to the summit, inside of that final K, before you cross over the summit, it gets up to 12%. So it really bites into your legs as you approach the top. Two leaders still looking really very comfortable, I have to say, Steve. And, and you know, four minutes back, we saw Garcelli going on the attack. I think it's a it's a pretty big, bold statement by him to be attacking from the field when they're so far behind the breakaway duo. It's a huge amount to try and make up on your own. So you see the official 2K banner. Now Scarponi leading the way here. Kerienka riding second wheel on the case to Ponya rider. And it seems like Scarponi has done the bulk of the work between these two. He certainly looks to be the stronger climber. Garcelli, look at him. He's moving at a very rapid pace at this point. He knows that he has to get across to these guys quickly. If he doesn't catch them at the top or just after the top, he's not going to be able to catch them on his own. So he has to make up all the ground here on the climb. He's digging very deep right now. First, he's going to be looking for the three riders who are dropped from the lead group. He's going to have to get through them and then make it up to our two leaders. He does not have a lot of real estate to work with, however. Garzelli wearing number one as the oldest former winner of the Giro that's in this year's field. Had Contador raced as the defending champion, he would have worn number one, but Alberto Contador spending this month of May riding the Alpine passes that will be included in the Tour de France this July. Contador, his last race with his tour of the Basque Country, which he won, took a short vacation, now back training in the mountains, both the Pyrenees and the Alps, getting ready to try and win his second ever Tour de France. Now all the major contenders looking like they're still here. DeLuca in the pink, we're seeing Horner and uh, a bunch of Astina there. And now is Kirienka in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he's he having looks, some trouble here. Yeah. Not looking too good, and that's why Scarponi has been leading the whole way up. Karienka just cannot take a pull. And, you know, you may wonder, to, can they actually get any draft on a climb? Well, you get a teeny bit of a draft, but it's also just a mental thing. You've got to stay on that wheel. You've got to stay on that wheel. But Scarponi really doing a good job setting the tempo, and Garzelli here looking like he's moving at a rapid clip, and he's got to be closing. 
Now Garzelli, now 35 years of age. If he wanted to do something in this race, he knew it had to be in the first week because those older legs are going to become more fatigued as the race unfolds. Here is the Peloton with the Maria Rosa in the background there. Danilo DeLuca, the overall race leader on GC, has some teammates around him. Also some Columbia High Road boys. There you see Lubquist on the right-hand side of your screen in the white jersey as the best young rider. And 1K for the leaders to go to the summit of the Hawk Arimal Climb. And in terms of that battle for the white jersey, Lovquist with over a two-minute advantage over his closest competitor. So he looks very solid and in look that. Look at the gap now. Now Vasil Kirienka, the winner of stage 19 of last year's Giro d'Italia, the 27-year-old suffering here as Michele Scarpone, winner of Torino Adriatico early this season. Now looking like the strongest of the original five men who established the day's primary breakaway. Okay, looking very solid here. Karienka not giving up, however. You look at him, he's just continuing to soldier on, just only a few bike lengths behind. Very unusual to see when someone gets dropped and they have facial expressions like that. You figure they're just going to absolutely blow up and, and we won't see them again. But Karienka is a true fighter here as he tries to maintain what may be a closable contact here at the top. Now coming up towards the summit now, and again, king of the mountains points are available here. Dennis Minshaw, the yesterday's stage number five winner, wearing the green jersey of the king of the mountains leader, even though he's sitting second in that classification because DeLuca is the current King of the Mountains leader in the classification itself, but obviously is the GC leader. The pink jersey takes precedent over the green. We've had a lot of that this year so far as riders in one category also leading another category. 500 meters to the top here, and Kirienka still holding on there as he tries to make sure that he can get back up to Scarponi, and I have to say at this point, Scarponi, with Kirienka this close at the top, he's going to want to get together with him afterwards, as Garzelli not giving up either. Now from Scarponi, he can hang on here. Ten points for first across the KOM selection on a Cat 1 climb like this. Now he might get some KOM points, but perhaps already thinking about that stage win. I think he's thinking a lot more about the stage win and the question being how much will this peloton close down over the top and, and we're not getting any time splits right now on the man in between Garzelli who's trying to go up to our two leaders. Now Scarpone looking up still can't see the summit with all of the Switchbacks with the nature of the turns, the trees, but he's getting there. Now, once he goes over the summit, there'll be four kilometers of descending, and then another short little climb, about a kilometer and a half, nothing really serious, and then it's all flat from there to the finish. Well, look at this. Garcelli now 1K to the top, but we have seen our lead duo inside of 500 meters. That means Garcelli is not going to be able to catch him before the top. He's going to have to really find some form and carve the turns like an unbelievable madman to get up to these guys on the descent. Well, both Scarpone and Garzelli really knocked out of GC contention these last couple of days. As we saw Garzelli six and a half minutes back on the general classification and Scarpone 619 out as the day began here. And there is the summit of the climb. So Michele Scarponi will go through first. He'll take 10 points in the King of the Mountains classification. And we'll wait and see where Vasil Kirienka comes through and then Stefano Garzelli. And then where the main field is in relation to our leader. And yeah, there's Kirienka. And there he not, is right there. Not far behind. It really would serve Scarponi to sit up right now and let's work together. It looks like he is waiting just a little bit. Let's get some food in us. We still have 25 miles to go. Yes, a lot of it's a descent but we need to still have good legs here for this last less than an hour to go. 30 seconds now, back to the man in pursuit, Garzelli. He still has a little ways to go here, it looks like. It's gonna be very tough for him to get across this gap now that they're gonna hit the downhill in front of him. And 
Uh, he's substantially behind as this looks like the Frenchman, Bonifon. Yeah, for the AG2R team, over 22 minutes back on the GC. And he'll, part of that original five-man breakaway that was shattered. And he'll take the third place spot. And the ISD rider, Oscar Gatto, the 24-year-old, coming up next. And we have not seen Klostergaard yet. Now Garzelli, well over a minute back, so. Now if you're Stefano Garzelli, what do you do now? It's going to be so tough to get back on over the top of the climb. He's looking over his shoulder here to see where the other riders are positioned. I guess you have to ask yourself, how much do you want to risk on the descent? I mean, how much do you really want to go for? What do you realistically think your chances are of getting across to those leaders yeah. with about 40 or so K left to run? Yeah, I mean, you look at the ticking clock, a minute 40, he's going to be over two minutes behind him. If I'm Garzelli at this point, I ride to the top within myself. I, I get a bunch of food in my system immediately, and then I wait and see behind if a small group comes from the field, and then you have strength in numbers. He's not going to be able to get across by himself at this point, but if somebody launches out of the field and he has a few guys, then you keep going. Over two minutes back, there is the main field. Sunshine now bathing the peloton and the leaders here. In looks the like, mid 60s. It on looks this like Thursday. he's got Closter Guard in sight, so he has picked up almost one of the original five as there was one rider just up the road in front of him. There's Closter Guard, the Soxabank rider. And he, Closter Guard really works as a team worker and originally came to this team a few years back and as a stage heir. They tried him out for a few races, they liked him, they signed him as a pro after that. But Garcelli here needs to get up with Closter Guard, and they just need to kind of think about pacing right now and see if anything's going to happen from the front of the field. So far in the front of the field, nothing really going on. And now the clock to the main field. Just about three minutes here. A couple of Astana riders on the right. Some Rabobank riders on the left. That looks like Levi, the second rider of the Astana there. His small stature build he's very smooth deluca right on his left in the pink and looks like dennis menchov also right close to the front as is lovkvist just off yeah. to the right of our screen and all of those gc contenders have several teammates around him right now menchov has the Robobank boys lovkvist has columbia Leipheimer has some astana teammates there and liquid gas is also represented up front supporting ivan basso right now and Rabobank coming to the front with Dennis Minchov in that green jersey. Now third wheel from the front of the main field here, it looks like. Now it's going to be the big question for Minchov as he made the big move to win stage five yesterday. Looking very good. He's a legitimate threat for the GC, but the big question is, is his Rabobank team strong enough and deep enough to go against the likes of Astana, Columbia High Road, and even what is proving to be a very strong LPR brakes team? Well, he showed a lot of his hand yesterday by taking that stage win, but he knows the time trial is going to be his foe, not his friend. So he's going to really have to be on for that TT. Let's not forget about Liquid Gas and how strong they've proven to be over the last couple of days, working for Ivan Basso. So they're putting the mountains of the day in the rear view mirror, looking forward to some flat roads for the final 40K of stage number six. Follow Lance Armstrong every day on the Giro d'Italia, only on Universal Sports. We believe in cycling. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. In fact, you might actually be able to pay just pennies on the dollar. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you. And that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. Many are former IRS agents who have inside knowledge that you can't get elsewhere. And that can make all the difference in the world. They saved my business. I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. The threatening letter stopped immediately. I got great advice, and they did all the work. 
If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, you owe it to yourself and your family to call this number and get your case settled for less. Now, you only have a small window of time to settle, so act now. For a free tax analysis, call 800-515-0290. There is no obligation. Call 800-515-0290 now. Getting ready for the day And taking time to make me smile And help me on my way You know who I am and where I'm gonna See the day's gonna be alright I wake up, love to turn you on yeah. This is my life This Memorial Day weekend, celebrate with the Denver Brass. Bring a can of food for Nine Cares Colorado Shares to The Sound of America, performed by the Denver Brass, May 22nd and 23rd, and get $5 off admission. Get breaking news alerts and daily news updates from Nine News. Go to NineNews.com and click on the Nine News Now icon to sign up. When you want it, when you need it. Nine News. Congratulations, Bruce Oysher, nice voted best sportscaster by the Colorado question. Broadcasters Association. Performance by Team USA on the move. Shot in the goal. Beautiful pass for Potter. Dug it and shot in the goal. What an exclamation point for Team USA. The United States now up 4 to 1. They went back to back goals in the World Championships. Let the celebration begin in Finland for Team USA. Stage number six of the Giro d'Italia. 248 kilometers has the look, the length, and the feel of a classic today. And now the main field is on the descent of the final climb of the day, the category one hot rimmel climb. Our leaders are just inside of 40 kilometers left to go to the finish. Their lead over the main field is hovering right around four minutes at the moment after just over five hours of racing to this point. Longest day of this year's Giro so far. Second longest stage of this year's race altogether. And here are the two leaders, Michele Scarpone in the white and Vasil Kiryenka of the Case Depagna team riding second wheel at the moment. It was Scarpone who dropped Kiryenka going up the climb. Kiryenka has gotten back on here on the descent, but this is where it starts to get somewhat interesting, Todd, because obviously Scarpone knows he's the stronger rider. Kiryenka has shown a weakness. So now that they're back together, if you're Scarpone, tactically, how do you handle this riding on the flatter roads and now on the descent with a rider who you know really can't pull his weight? Well, Kiryenka not known as much for his climbing as for his time trialing ability. So the worst is probably over for him. However, if you are Scarpone, Scarponi obviously very superior today, and he needs to just encourage Karienka, hey, look, we still have four minutes over the front of the field. We have a chance here. We got to do it together. We can't do it one if one guy is ahead of the other. So we got to stay together. We got to be all in. We can fight this out at the end, but we have to be basically teammates right now. Karyanka leading Scarpone, and as I just mentioned, just a little inside of 40 kilometers left to go. The lead about four minutes. So, given where we are now, as there are no more hills to climb, it's downhill from here, and then flattens out for quite a ways before the finish. What kind of a chance do you give these two guys, or a break of any kind, at this point of staying away? Uh, it's it's really tough to predict at this point. Four minute advantage. They're, they have a, they have a chance. It really depends on what sprinters teams decide that they want to go to the front. I mean, there's a lot of guys left in the field. That means a lot of our potential sprinters are still there. Pataki's going to probably be in there. Farah, question mark. I don't know if he would have made it. Cavendish, I don't know if he would have made it. Pozzato should have made it for Katusha. Ben Swift for Katusha, I don't know if he would have made it. Alan Davis possibly could have made it for Quickstep. Gilbert for Seelan Lotto. Robbie Hunter, we haven't seen him. But uh, Garcelli there with uh, Klostergaard. Klostergaard. So now they're together. Looks like looks like Garcelli has decided he's not going to wait for anybody from the field. He's heard no one's going off the front. He's going to try and get across. Quite honestly, 
I don't see it happening. Klostergaard's already been off the front a long time. He's tired. I don't see how they can close this gap. I think one of the prominent decisions of the day will be what teams really want to chase because you have to think that we're getting into that area where you have to start to make, as they go into 35K left to ride, some strategic choices. There's so many mountains scattered across the three weeks, so many difficult days, even like today, and you're coming off two consecutive mountaintop finishes the last two days. The sprinters teams are tired, everybody feeling the fatigue. So how much energy do you want to burn chasing down breaks? At some point, you got to say, we're going to let this one go. We're not going to really make a huge effort today. And those are the types of choices teams, especially of the sprinters, are going to have to make throughout these three weeks. I think the sprinters teams, with the exception of LPR, which also has the Malia Rosa, have to chase. So if you're quick step, you've got to chase. If you're Garmin, and you don't have a GC guy anymore, you have to chase. Anybody who doesn't have a GC man, Silence Lotto has to chase. And you see it starting to get strung out, as it often does on the descent of any climb. And there is Alessandro Pataki, still our sprint leader. And back-to-back -back winner of stages earlier this week. And Pataki looking pretty good there in the peloton right now. To enjoy life like room filling sound, you used to need large, complicated equipment. Not with the Bose Wave music system. It's barely noticeable in your room until you turn it on. You can hear everything, and it's just amazing that all that sound comes out of that little space. The sound quality was just phenomenal. Once you've heard it, everything else just doesn't measure up. Forbes FYI reports you'll think you're listening to a system that costs five times more and now also available in titanium silver. There's no towering rack of equipment, no tangle of wires, no rows of buttons and dials. The Wave music system sets up in minutes, and it's simple to use. But wait until you hear it. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the sound. It's magic. Inside, Bose Acoustic Waveguide speaker technology delivers a room full of natural sound. Just slide in your favorite CD or listen to FM or AM. The fact that this thing picks up the crisp highs as well as the deep lows was very impressive to me. Even connect your MP3 player or TV and enjoy it with Bose sound. It puts out the same sound without all the contraptions and the size of the old-fashioned stereos. How could that be? The Wave music system is now available in titanium silver. Add our optional multi-CD changer for even more enjoyment. It took me all of about three minutes to make the decision. So call today and ask about making 12 easy payments with no interest charges from Bose. Order now for free shipping. Enjoy premium Bose sound risk-free for 30 days and hear what you've been missing. If you want a room full of sound without a room full of equipment, get the Wave Music System. Now also available in titanium silver. From Bose, the most respected name in sound. And when that comes on, we just start dancing. No matter what we're doing. Back to the top, this is Patrick Deneed of the USA. Oh, beautiful. And he threw the back foot by cross. Look at this. And this is his signature. Deneed is a speed demon. Wow. Huge off the bottom jump. Patrick Deneed goes into first place. So your world champion, Patrick Deneed of the USA. Join Michael Phelps on his comeback. He is super. Universal Sports, home of the 2009 World Swimming Championships. Just about a quarter of the way through the centennial edition of the Giro d'Italia. This is day number six, and this is what is a very fast-moving main field right now as they are in pursuit of two leaders, Michele Scarponi and Vasil Karienko, still on the descent of the Category 1 Hot Rimmel Climb. We had a Category 3 earlier in the day, the Felbertauern, then the Category 1 Hot Rimmel, and now inside a 35K left to ride for the leading group of two. These are the two riders down the road a bit. It's Gazzelli 
in the red and white of Aqua and Sapone and Casper Klosterguard from the Saxo Bank team sitting on his wheel. Uh, they're still quite a ways back from our two leaders, Scarpone and also Kirienka. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, I, I think that gr graphic we just got, 314, was actually from our leaders to our chasers. And if that's really the case, I think that Garzelli is racing more with on his emotion than he is racing with his head. If he's that far back, he's not going to catch these guys. It means the field's right behind him. And he needs to be a little bit smarter. This is a long race, and he already got beat up yesterday, and he's flogging himself here, maybe po very quite possibly for no reason. And the main field now coming through, 35K left to go. Now, Michele Scarponi, the Italian who started the day over six minutes back on the general classification, has looked to be the strongest rider we've seen at the front of the race so far. Quick step. Would love to get Alan Davis in position for a sprint today. Ben Swift would like to have a chance from Katusha. How many of the other sprinters who we mentioned on the early days, like Pataki, like Tyler Farah, obviously like Cavendish, how many of them have the legs after going up over the big mountains the last two days in the Dolomites? Can they recover this quickly? And 315 now from our lead duo to our Garzelli group, which means that the pack must be right behind him because it was about a four minute advantage for our lead duo over the Peloton at the top of the climb. Now, Garzelli has attacked a couple of different times today. This most recent one still has him out in front of the main field with under 30K left to go, but still far enough behind that it's going to be very tough for him to really do anything substantial on this stage. And now, at this point, Stefano Garzelli is really kind of a an X factor because he's one of those riders who, even in his best years, was always a guy who could climb with the best of them, but then he would always have that one bad day here or there where he could lose several minutes at a time. And you often find that with riders, especially in the Grand Tours, because it's over three weeks, there's so many huge mountain days that three out of five days they can climb pretty well, but there's those one or two days where they just are having a bad day, they can't climb, and they get dropped and lose several minutes, a huge chunk of time at one particular time, and that really will cost him a podium. That was so amazing about Lance during his run of seven. He never had that one bad day, really. Yeah, I agree with you in, in uh, principle, but except for the year 2000, when Garcelli didn't have the bad day, and, uh, and he pulled yeah, off the year win. Right. And, but uh, back at the front of the peloton, a lot of blue and white. That's either Quickstep or Katusha, and Katusha could be riding for or Pizzato or Swift, and obviously Quickstep riding for Alan Davis. Now Lance Armstrong was near the front of the main field there in the shot a moment ago as the peloton still rolls along towards these two as Karienka comes through to take over the pulling duties from Michele Scarpone. Karienka has certainly put himself through the ringer here today as he's still taking big poles on the front after being dropped on that climb and trailing Scarponi for so many kilometers and still now that he's up there he realizes they have a chance they're still over three minutes they're inside of 30k this is a real flip of the coin 30k to go with three minutes it could go either way it's rule of thumb 10 uh 10 kilometers one minute if it's flat it's much easier for them to stay away if there's a climb at the end much harder for them to stay away Terribly long pull out front for Vasil Kirienka as Scarponi comes through once again. 132 to the chasing group, but the Peloton a little bit behind them, so still a rather comfortable lead for these two. So that 132 must be to Bonafar and Gatto, the two riders that they had dropped earlier on the climb because we saw Garcelli and Klostergaard together. But we're this not looks like Garzelli by himself now. That does look like Garzelli by himself. So closer guard possibly has popped or he was just in front of Garzelli. And there's the Peloton. So it's time to sit up and say that didn't work today for Garzelli as Peloton moving very fast here. It looks like the sprinters team still thinking they have a shot at bringing back our two leaders. And there's closer guard. So this group now done. 
and they'll both wait to be gobbled up by the Peloton shortly here. Now well, they gave it a go. Gartelli a couple of different times today, but it did not stick as he's got 30 kilometers left to ride to the finish in the Austrian town of Meierhofen. Since we've come on the air, the race has been entirely in Austria after starting in northern Italy earlier today in the town of Bresinone. Tomorrow it also begins in Austria. Stage number seven kicks off in Innsbruck, goes through Switzerland for a while, and then heads southwest back into Italy as we now have a mechanical somewhere near the back of the field, it looks like. Oh, no, wait a minute. Let's see. No, this is, uh, this is our Karienka. rider Karienka. This is not in the back of the field. This is Vasil Karienka, who was with Scarponi. Oh, very bad for our two breakaway riders, as now the question is, does Scarponi wait for Karienka to have the help, or does he just go on ahead? A little bit of a short wheel change there, it seemed to me. And we look up the road for Scarponi. He's got a bit of a gap here, so let's see how he plays it. Does he wait? and have strength in numbers, or does he just say, this is too long for me to wait, and now I'm gonna go alone? My tough time to have an issue such as that. Now gotta work that much harder, and remember, he was suffering earlier, especially on the Hakarimal climb. Now have to oh. expending much more energy, and now yeah, almost a half minute behind Scarboni. Oh, look at this, look at this, Karyanka starting to cramp up. This is not looking very good for the Belarusian. So 28 seconds behind, a chase group at 132, and the main field at 342. Behind Michele Scarponi, now by himself, the Italian for the Dickwood Giovanni team. A very, very smart move here on the team car of Karienka. Even if Karienka doesn't need his brake adjusted, the car comes up, the mechanic hangs out, we just put a wheel on, we can get away with this. He can give him a little bit of rest. He can hold on to the car and hopefully get those cramps out of his system. Karienka back on it now, but a big gap, 28 seconds to Scarponi. This could be it for Karienka for the day. Now Scarponi nowhere in sight. This would be another good opportunity to have the car come up and give him a bottle, give him a bit of a power bottle where he gets a little bit of a tug there. You can't do it too much when you're chasing like this, but just get a little bit of any little advantage you can to try and get back up to Scarponi. And the main field really stretched out now, single file in most places here on this long descent. Now Vasil Kirienka, the case to pond rider who had a mechanical just a moment ago. Now cramping up somewhat, was struggling on the last climb of the day, has lost his companion, Michele Scarpone, now with a difficult chore and trying to get back across and on the wheel of the leader. Michele Scarpone, the Italian, now riding by himself. Can he keep this away from the main field? Can he stretch it out and make it stick to the finish in Meerhofen? We'll find out as we roll along here on Universal Sports. Here comes Lindsey Vaughn. Nice flight off there. She is building speed. Whoa, oh, she man. hit the gate there. How much of that cost her? Over these final turns here to the finish line, and she grabs the lead. She has won herself another Super G and another discipline title. Hi, I'm John Shear, CEO and founder of Video Professor. I'm the guy that gives away the free computer learning lessons. Well, today I'm here to tell you about a great new product that many of you have been asking for. And here it is, how to buy and sell on eBay, and I'll give it to you free. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I can make you the next millionaire selling an attic full of baseball cards, but I can guarantee you that I'll teach you everything you need to know about eBay by cleaning out your garage and probably putting some money in your pocket at the same time. Now, I can do this because I know that once you try my lesson on eBay, you'll be so satisfied that the next time you need to learn anything about computers, you'll come back to Video Professor for all your computer learning needs. And with over 55 lessons on all of today's most popular computer programs, I know that there's more you'll want to learn. Call now, and I'll send you eBay or any other lesson of your choice free. So what do you got to lose? Try my product. Call 1-800-771-8343. That's 1-800-771-8343. Closer? Look how high that thing's going. There, look at the debris. Oh. Uh, give me the camera. No, no, just drive. I've got it. Zoom in. Zoom in. You can't believe this is happening. Oh, oh the size of that thing. 
It's everywhere. Are you getting this? Yeah, I've got it. What was that? It's the National Guard. How'd they get here so fast? I don't know. Pull over. Pull over. Do you have what it takes to head into the heart of the storm? Check out NationalGuard.com. I'm Jesse Horn, 9 Sports, and if you're not getting your hoops here, you ought to be getting them on the Prep Rally on 9news.com. Just click to pick your school's custom page. Upload your pictures, upload your videos, or watch complete Game Hoops highlights from the 9 News Hot Shots. For a total rundown of the week's biggest games, check out the Prep Rally weekend mornings on 9 News. The best way to keep track of... Your school, your sport, your team! Only on 9 News! <laughs> Bring you back to our stage six coverage of the 2009 Giro d'Italia on Universal Sports. Steve Schlanger with Todd Gogolski. There is now one man at the front of the race, Michele Scarpone, the Italian for the Dickwe Giovanni team, part of an original five man breakaway that really got established 57 kilometers into today's marathon, 248 kilometer stage from northern Italy into Austria, finishing in the Austrian town of Merhofen today. And Scarpone has had good legs all day, now descending by himself into the valley and trying to stay away from the peloton that has really started to pick up the pace. Earlier they looked a, a bit more lethargic, but now here's Katusha riding at the front as is Quick Step. Katusha obviously has the aspirations of a Ben Swift, maybe Posato in their minds today. Quick Step has Alan Davis, a guy looking for his first sprint stage win as they go under 25K left to ride. And Davis on these earlier stages, the Pataki one was definitely in the mix in both of them. Posato was close as well. Uh, uh, we saw Ben Swift also in there. All three of those guys you just mentioned. Some other guys we might want to think about once again. Tyler Farah, could he have made the over the top of that climb? Climb might have been a little too tough for Farah. J.J. Hayato, the Soxo Bank rider, we haven't seen him at all. But uh, talked with Bobby Julik after the team time trial on day one. He said Hayato was very strong. And so if Hayato could have made it over the climb, maybe we'll see Hayato for the first time here towards the end of this race as well. We really haven't seen Soxo Bank coming to the front in mass all that much in the first few days, have we? No, we really haven't. Uh, I got to feel like maybe they're thinking of this race as more of a general tune-up race for them. They didn't send the Schleck brothers here for the GC. They don't have anybody here for the general classification. Uh, also, uh, another possible sprinter, Forster, for Milram. There's a guy we haven't seen much of, but could potentially factor in here today as well. Maybe some teams also just picking their spots with so many tough days over these three weeks, and it's so spread out. Yeah, Katusha doing a lot of work here now, so they must have some confidence that Pozzato and or Swift can win this day, but they still have the very difficult task of bringing back our leader out on the road, Michele Scarponi, who's having an incredible ride here. Now looking over his shoulder to see if Katayanka might be within sight. It's really really unfortunate the flat tire there of Karyanka because not only does it take Karyanka out significantly here but it takes both of these riders as we get a nice slow-mo here of Scarponi he's got to get down he's got to save some energy on these descents whenever it's going to be a steep enough descent where you can coast and save your legs it's very important because he has nobody to trade pace with right now it's just him and that's it Tight turns on the descent here. And once we get into the town of Merhofen, it is not a circuit finish, but there's also some very technical turns, especially a very sharp left-hand turn as you approach the final kilometer, and then a right-hand bend with about 500 meters to go to the finish. So if a large group does come together here towards the end of the stage, coming into Merhofen together, there's some technical, very narrow streets and tight turns to deal with, so that could make it very interesting. Whoa, look at the bobble there of Scarponi. Looked like he got a little bit sideways into that corner as they bring it to us in slow motion. I couldn't tell if that was the front wheel washing out or the back wheel as we just caught the end of the footage there. But that'll get the adrenaline up and get you to pucker up just a little bit, and you may be a little bit more hesitant on the rest of the descent now. How often do you find yourself puckering up during your days, Gogo? Uh, it happens all too often where you get through something and you're like, wow, I'm glad to still be on my bike right now. So it's amazing the speed of some of these descents. Sometimes the camera angles don't do it justice, just how fast these guys are flying. 
And look at that. I mean, sometimes you're wheel to wheel at a high rate of speed, very technical turns, and these guys have mastered it. Yeah, and what, one thing, one of the techniques they use on these descents, and only really when it's steep, but what they'll do is they'll actually counter steer. It sounds a little counterintuitive. People who ride motorcycles know about this a lot more than most cyclists realize. Uh, cyclists because the bike is so light, but when you're making a right-hand turn and you're really going high rate of speed, you actually don't turn the handlebars to the right. You actually push the right side of the bar down and what it does is lean the bike over to the right because it turns your wheel to the left out of the turn. And it's very subtle, but this counter steering effect is critical to getting through the corners fast. It sets your weight up properly. It's just a very little thing. So they literally as, oh, look at this. Oh, Karienka has almost gotten back onto Scarponi now. Maybe his counter steering was working just a little bit better than, Car than Scarponi's. And maybe when Scarponi almost lost it, that caused him to lose a little bit of his confidence there. But counter steering, a very critical part of dialing in a descent. Now, Scarponi was also looking over his shoulder a few moments ago, maybe waiting to see if perhaps Karienko was within sight, if he could get back on, and they might be able to work together here inside the final 20K. Well, I tell you what, Scarponi needs to be very, very supportive of Karienko right, supportive of Karienko right now, because first he hurt him on the climb, then he left him behind after he got a puncture. If he wants Karienko to pull at this point, he's going to have to be pretty smooth. Well, would you have done anything differently with uh, a breakaway companion like this, having a puncture on a descent like that? Would you have waited? Would you have slowed down? Or would you have kept on going like Scarponi did? <laughs> You know, so much of it is to thinking to, of yourself, like, how good do I feel? If I felt good, I probably would have kept going because when you hear that he's a full or 30 seconds behind you, a slow wheel change, you don't want to lose that much time. If I was hurting, then I would have held back. And now it's quick step on the front. So quick step uh, taking a bit of a control here of the chase. And it's this works very well for Danilo DeLuca because his team no longer having to use up any of their strength in their pursuit right now. Right around 15K left to go. It is once again two men at the front. Vasil Kirienka pacing Michele Scarpone. They go under the 15K banner left to go. Can they stay away in stage six of the Giro? timeshare turn it into cash we sold our timeshare and got this big check no more maintenance fees thanks that was easy when you call now you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry if you want to buy sell or rent call now with billions of dollars sold now could be the best time to sell with the cash we got from selling our timeshare we paid off our credit card no more maintenance fees no more credit card debt Call now and get your free information kit with our insider's guide to buying, selling, and renting timeshares. Plus, receive a free $100 gift card. With thousands of satisfied customers, we are the largest timeshare resale marketplace in the world. Call us today. You'll thank us tomorrow. We bought our timeshare and we got exactly what we wanted. Thank you. You're the best. Call now and get your free information kit and free $100 gift card. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 1-800-919-4859 for your free information kit and $100 free gift card. 1-800-919-4859. Beating us on the boards out there, guys. This is your territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Hi, honey. What? Now? All right. Yitsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life.
Universal Sports, home of world champions. The main field going through the Austrian town of Zellemsieler now here in the latter stages of day number six of the 2009 Giro d'Italia. Now, earlier today, it was quite a hectic pace with a lot of attacks going clear in the first 10K or so. The primary break of the day finally took it just inside of the first 60 kilometers, and then it was five men who rode together for quite a ways before those five started to splinter. What we're left now is with these two riders. Vasil Kirienka, the rider for Case de Parn in front, and then Michele Scarponi of the Dickwee Giovanni team riding on his wheel. And they're inside of the final 15K on the day. This is the strung out Peloton in pursuit. There's a pack in the middle. A group of riders chasing at 110 off the pace right now. But Kirienka, boy, he's had a battle. He was suffering on the final climb, a cat one and then started cramping, had a mechanical issue. He still fought back to catch up to Scarpone, now pacing him and really showing a lot of fight today. Inside of 10 miles for these two guys, and at this point, uh, haven't gotten a gap to the pack recently, and right now it's quick step on the front, second rider, Katusha, third rider, Katusha, then some more quick step. So these two are the teams that think they can win this if they can bring back our two leaders. I think the two leaders still have a significant advantage, though. Karyanka looking over, perhaps exchanging a few words with Scarponi. What would the conversation between these two be at this point? <laughs> you know, I think it's got to be Karyanka saying, I am absolutely cracking right now, but I'm going to do everything I can to try and stay away here because if we get caught we're not going to have anything left at all they're getting the word from their managers that the chase is on the time is coming down but Kirienka, man this guy does not say die he continues to fight on and fight on and fight on and Katusha still at the front of the main field quick step and Katusha two teams that look very similar with the blue and the white, but those are the two Katusha riders in the white jerseys there at the front, and then the quick step that's more a combination of the white and blue just in behind. The other thing I wonder is what the language is a Belarusian and an Italian can find any commonality in. So these two guys certainly try to communicate here a bit. Kirienka continues on at the front, but he has got to be really nearing the end of his rope. Scarponi in no hurry to come forward. No, he really isn't. He's, he's given Karienka a big turn on the front here. And you know, here's the deal. When you're in a breakaway and you only have two guys, first thing you got to think about is staying away. Second thing you got to think about is how you're going to win the race. But basically, the objective here from this breakaway group that only two guys have survived from is making everybody else do as much work as possible and you come to the finish line the strongest rider and so far what we've seen is Scarponi obviously the strongest here he probably feels he can easily get rid of Kirienka if they're able to stay away so they just need to keep working keep going steady now still maintaining a pretty sizable advantage back to the main field it's being led by Katusha and also quick step right now it took a while for that chase to really get organized, and you start to wonder, did they start too late? Are these guys still strong enough? And with flat roads to go all the way to the finish, will they possibly stay away now? Uh, Kirienka is doing a huge amount of work right now. He seems to be doing more work than Scarponi does. Really surprising at 10K to go. Remember, that's 6.2 miles. Now look at this, 138 back to the main field with 10K remaining. It's starting to look better and better. It's starting to look pretty good for these two riders. I think that the field is moving very fast right now. You can see all of our overhead views in our frontal view right now. Katusha on the front, quick step. Also a few riders back sitting in third and then more Katusha. So they're moving very fast. There's one of our, here we go. This is Gatto and Bonifon finally have been caught. So they are no longer in between. There are only two men left. And really right now, it's touch and go for our two leaders. 10K to go, over a minute. I'd say advantage breakaway right now. And 
some of the technical turns that we mentioned on the course in the closing kilometers, especially in the finishing town of Meerholfen. Look at this, look at this. There's separation in our leaders. It looks like Scarponi has distanced himself from Kirienka. He looks oh. like he may be cramping again. He is suffering huge right now. Boy, what a tough day it's been for him. He hasn't given up, but this could be it. Scarponi looks like he's riding away from him. He can't even pedal his bike. He's stopping pedaling. He's, he's lost his fluidity. Here comes the team car. They need to be, oh, look at this. this is a bad, bad sign. They need to be pumping electrolytes into him. I would expect that they would have been giving him very thick electrolyte mixes over the last hour because he was cramping all, already earlier today, but it looks like it's come back and he is going to be done. Now that's the visual gap from the main field that's being led by Katusha and Quickstep right now up to Scarponi and a now dropped Vasil Kirienka. So for the second time, Michele Scarponi is out by himself, riding solo at the head of the race here today on stage number six, the Peloton. 122 behind, but Scarponi inside of the final 10K, trying to take it all the way to the line for the stage win here at the Giro. Follow Lance Armstrong every day on the Giro d'Italia. Only on Universal Sports. We believe in cycling. Michael Phelps is up to the challenge now. And here he comes. He's going to be very close. Retailers don't want you to see the information about to be disclosed. Hi, I'm Tony Galata. This is my wife, Carrie Galata. This is our house, my wife's greenhouse. And we furnish most everything in this house with products from direct buying. We purchased the breakfast table and chairs. We looked at that table and some other places. They ran around $3,500 and we picked it up for around $1,500. If you're building, remodeling, or simply redecorating a room, there's now a way to buy virtually everything you need at prices you never imagined possible. We've saved, I think, well over $20,000. Just on our kitchen alone, we saved almost $10,000. It adds up to about a thirty dollars to $40,000 savings overall. Call the number on your screen now to receive your free insider's guide to buying direct. Plus, you'll also receive a free visitor's pass for an exclusive tour of your local direct buy showroom. Call right now to get started buying the direct buy way. Stop paying retail and become part of Direct Buy, the private members-only showroom and design center. Don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call now. You're covered from start to it's a two-door coupe with a really big scratch across the back door. When can you get someone to... Save me some money. I just got my bill from my insurance company. It may be time for a change. It all begins with a personalized insurance assessment where we take the time to understand you and then help you understand your options. Sure, it's got anti-lock brakes and airbags, but I feel safe knowing I've got the right coverage, too. Of course, the true measure of an insurance company is how you're treated if you have an accident. Amica is there for you 24-7. No wonder Business Week recognized us yet again for a customer service. They went all out to settle my claim. I had no idea it would be so easy. Call Amica now. Good drivers could save hundreds. Uh, saving money's nice. Great service is nicer. With Amica, I get both. Call Amica today because it's not just how you're covered. covered. It's, it's how, how you're treated. treated. about for the main field to deal with here. A peloton being led by Kadusha and Quickstep right now. Do they have enough time to bring back our one leader, Michele Scarpone? Last check, about a minute and a half over this charging peloton right now. Onto the flat roads around the Austrian town of Meerhofen. And Steve, you can see how small the, ro the roads are here and the chaos we've seen in these other big bunch finishes. This run in is going to be a little bit sketchy for people. You can see the Levi Leipheimer sitting about 10 riders back, comfortably in a good spot. There's the pink jersey of Danilo De Luca as well on the right side of the screen. Riders need to be careful right now. If you're a general classification contender, you got to have some of your lieutenants keeping you up in the front. I see Lovqvist just saw him in the white jersey with Bo Ossenhagen in front. So all the main guys still staying close to the front. There is the 29-year-old Italian, Michele Scarpone, who was suspended for his connection to the Operation Puerto case, set out all of 2008, has bounced back this year with an overall win and a stage victory at Torino Adriatico.
still searching for his first ever Grand Tour stage win and hoping that it comes today here on stage number six of the Centennial Giro d'Italia. Now Kiryanka, who was Scarponi's companion for a while, is now over 10 seconds back after cramping for the second time here late in the stage. Interesting to see there. DeLuca oh, with no teammates, Ryder but we do step. have Lokvist with a uh, rider in front of him. So DeLuca kind of fending for himself. Now there's LPR. There's his teammate right in front of him now. And quick step again, organizing things at the front here. One thirteen. I have to say, this is looking very, very good for Scarponi right now. And now the field doesn't look like it's at quite the same speed it was. Scarponi may be able to pull this off, Steve. Well, you've got a Kutusha rider at the front, followed by a couple of quick step boys. And, well, no, no serious organization from a big team right now in full pursuit, it looks like. Guys trading pulls out there, and it's getting a, a bit spread out on the road as well. So no long train that's really dialing up the pace the way you would normally see late in a stage like this with a flat finish. Yeah, I have a feeling if Katusha and Quick Step teams have so decided, well, Quick Step's still on the front, yeah. but no, no Katusha left. Yeah. I think they're saying, you know what? We can't make it 6K to go, just over three miles. That's still doable. I mean, it's not out of the question, but they have to really continue at a high rate of speed here. And the Katusha team is now completely pulled off. Just a couple of quick step riders left at the front. And then after that, it's really about it. You've got a couple of LPR guys, but a lot of them, it looks like, are, are looking after Danilo DeLuca, not necessarily looking to set up Alessandro Pataki. And oh, Kirianka really struggling here. Oh, you got to feel for this man. I mean, he looks like he is dying a thousand deaths out here, trying to stay in front of the There's group. There's Pataki right there behind Levi Leipheim. Uh, Pataki, a good potential winner here from the bunch, but I have to say right now, Scarponi looks very solid. We've got a couple of lieutenants there for Levi Leipheimer. So the GC men doing a wise thing here. It's, it gets going to get real twisty here in the next kilometer or so, and they need to stay at the front. Scarponi looking very solid every time we see him. All the body language points to a guy who is looking for a stage win right now. Now coming into the town of Meerhofen now, just about an hour away from the Tyrolean capital of Innsbruck, where tomorrow stage number seven will begin. And now 5K left to go for our leader, Scarponi. There we go, 3.1 miles to the line. Pretty flat, some little undulation here, but nothing to dera derail his, his sort of rhythm. He's looking very solid. I think he's uh, I think he's gonna hold on, Steve. Now look at this. The pace nowhere near what it was several kilometers ago. And don't forget those tight technical turns coming up once you get into the heart of the city of Meerhofen here. Meerhofen hosting a Giro d'Italia stage finish for the first time ever. In fact, it's never welcomed the race either as a start town or a finish town until today. Now getting a sense of the difference now with the clock in the bottom right hand corner of your screen where the peloton is in relation to Michele Scarponi. And you can see the riders work in the sidewalk there because the battle now is in earnest for position and there's nowhere to move up. The field is gutter to gutter and 108. I, unless unless Scarponi has a biomechanical or a crash, I think he's got it all the way to the line right now. Now, when you see the main field spread out like that, pretty good indication. The speed has dropped. The pursuit has also pretty much ended in earnest. And they realize that they're not going to get him at this point. They realize that Scarponi has taken the day. Yeah, now it's time for any team who has aspirations to win the field sprint for second spot as he crosses the 4K to go. And so these teams are going to sort of take restock a little bit and, and figure out who's got a guy who can win the sprint for second, but it's never as big a fight for second as there is for first. Now the Peloton is in two groups, and this is the large group, the first of the two on the road. Several different teams now there at the front. And, and you see how narrow the roads are getting there in Meerhofen here. This is the group of the Maria Rosa of Danilo DeLuca, the overall race leader coming into stage number six. And back to Scarponi now. 
Coming up on this very tight turn here. Look at that. Whoa. I would not want to be in the peloton for that one. Thirty-six seconds back to Kirienko, who is no longer a factor. Now Michele Scarpone. What a day he has had. There is the pink jersey of Danilo DeLuca with a teammate by his side. Chris Horner of Astana right behind him. Ivan Basso is there. Levi Leipheimer was in that group as well. And here's Kirienko, it looks like. Coming up on the turn that Scarponi just navigated a moment ago. A long and difficult day for Vasil Kirienko, a guy who won a stage of the Giro last year. Got in the break today, but it would not be his day. And the out. LPR breaks, boys, are now at the front. They've got DeLuca with them. Keeping DeLuca out of trouble, and in the meantime, it looks like they're also really squashing the chance of Karienka to stay away. Karienka just went around that corner a matter of seconds ago. I think the man's not going to be able to hold on for seconds. Now these technical, tight, difficult turns also making it tough for them to close the gap to Michele Scarpone, basically impossible at this point. You see that on the front, the LPR rider holding his left hand out, just signaling to everybody, hey, this is a hard left turn. In fact, it's a very hard left turn. They're, they're, they're ne negotiating. They just went through over a 90-degree corner. Main field under 3K left. And now Scarpone coming up to 2K. hasn't shown many signs of weakness here today. He has been strong from wire to wire. Yeah, this man has had an incredible day here. And remember we talked with Van de Veld uh, right after he pulled out of the race when he had cracked ribs, and we said, who are some of your favorites? And that's, this is one of the men he mentioned. A lot of the riders were pegging him more for one of the mountain stages, too, not necessarily one of these finishes with so many flat kilometers between the last climb and the finish itself. Yeah, tomorrow a nice day for him just to sit in. Hopefully he'll make it all the way to the line here today without any strange incidents and tomorrow get a bit of a recovery. He's certainly going to need it after this day. Oh, and there's Karienka and it looks like they're about to absorb him at 2K to the line. And Levi Leipheimer among the riders near the front of the main field and now 1,400 meters left to go for Michele Scarpone. A guy who's ridden for several teams throughout his career, had two stints with Aqua and Sapone, also rode for Liberty Seguros, Dominic Akanze, and now in his first year with Dickwe Giovanni, a team of two-time Giro winner Gilberto Simoni. And if you look at this, it really is, oh, this is a different group. That's the, yeah, the second Yeah, the Peloton group. has yep. been split into two, right. And we don't really know who that was, but I saw a bunch of Astana in there. And at the end here of the race, if you're wondering, does the pace look just a little bit slow? Yeah, there, there is the red kite. There's One kilometer left K. to go for Michele Scarpone. It's all just slightly uphill at the finish line. So the pace just not quite the breakneck speed you would see if it were a flat run in. Now Michele Scarpone with the cars in behind him should know it now that he is about to sew up the win in stage number six. A uh, glim glimpse of Lance Armstrong just a moment ago, too. Lost some time each of the last two days. Will there be a big gap to Armstrong here at the end of this stage six? And Karienka just getting absorbed and already back to about 30th place, so his day is done. Scarponi going to take the win here as he's inside of 500 meters now. Now it's our first break that has stayed away at this year's Giro d'Italia. Michele Scarpone, after almost six hours and 248 kilometers, the 29-year-old Italian will have that oh-so-good feeling of riding solo in to the stage win here at a Grand Tour. Scarpone rides home to his first ever stage victory at a Grand Tour. And now the clock starts. 
see what kind of a gap may be developing here. Now there's Lance, it looks like, right there. So Lance, something happened. I don't know if it was a climb or not, and this looks like the sprint coming in from the field, and that could be Blossenhag and the Columbia High Road rider, Alan Davis behind him, and Posato. Now the winner of Hentem Evelgen takes second on the day. Look at the time bonus there. And now a large group coming through here. We'll see who's all together here, who gets what time, and it looks like all of our top GC guys were near the front of that first main field, that first group of riders, because the peloton was split in two, so looks like they should all keep the same time. Yeah, I did see the pink jersey of DeLuca in there. Now some other riders coming through. And, well, this is where the split occurred, it looked like, so have to see who is in that first group, who is in the second group that now crosses over 115 behind, and Lance Armstrong in the second group, so Lance has lost over a minute. So Lance Armstrong loses over a minute here on this stage number six, and we'll sort out the GC when we come back. of world champions. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. We sold our timeshare and got this big check. No more maintenance fees, thanks. That was easy. When you call now, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. With billions of dollars sold, now could be the best time to sell. With the cash we got from selling our timeshare, we paid off our credit card. No more maintenance fees, no more credit card debt. Call now and get your free information kit with our insider's guide to buying, selling, and renting timeshares. Plus, receive a free $100 gift card. With thousands of satisfied customers, we are the largest timeshare resale marketplace in the world. Call us today. You'll thank us tomorrow. We bought our timeshare and we got exactly what we wanted. Thank you. You're the best. Call now and get your free information kit and free $100 gift card. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 1-800-919-4859 for your free information kit and $100 free gift card. 1-800-919-4859. On my... ...of Illusions back. Whatever you do, don't blink. You've never seen magic like this. Death-defying. Heart-stopping. Reality-twisting. Jaw-dropping illusions. That will leave you spellbound. Magicians from around the world perform mind-bending tricks you have to see to believe. Incredible escape artists. Sensational sleight of hand experts. And acts both beautiful and bizarre. Come together on one stage to show off their amazing magic. Open your eyes. Open your mind. Dare to believe. Masters of Illusion, Mondays at 9, 8 central on My Network TV. And now the American Lindsay Van. A big jump for her. Oh, that's terrific. She's got it. She's got it. A sensational jump. And is going to get the goal. The first ever in women's ski jumping at the Nordic World Championships. Universal Sports, home of world champions. The Italian Michele Scarpone at the front of this race most of the day, but most importantly, at the front, at the finish, by himself. His first ever stage win at a Grand Tour comes on stage six of the centenary Giro d'Italia. And now the GC looking like this after six days here at the Giro. No change in the top eight, and Danilo De Luca will keep the pink jersey. Five-second lead over Thomas Lukquist. However, Lance Armstrong, way down in the GC at this point, loses over a minute on the day. He's now 4:13 back of Danilo De Luca. Lance was dropped during the high-speed pursuit that was being led by Katusha and Quickstep as they tried to bring Scarponi back. 
So Lance losing some time again today as we take you to the podium now. And the winner, Michele Scarpone, celebrating one of the biggest days of his career. And we knew that it was going to be critical to have good position in that run in, and Lance unfortunately suffered a bad position and uh, went off the back with about 30 other riders. But Scarponi, a huge ride for this man today, and we're going to see a lot more of him over the course of this race. And also, in regards to the pink jersey, as Scarponi will celebrate. After having four different riders in pink over the first five days, we could be into a stretch here where DeLuca holds pink for quite a while as look out. Oh, the podium oh. girl getting sprayed by the champagne. That's uh, that's bad, that's bad news right there. You're never supposed to well, spray. It's his first time. Blue. It's his first time. He's never got the opportunity to do this in a grand tour. So Scarponi not exactly up on the etiquette there. Uh, but we could be, as I said, in this span of the race where DeLuca may hold pink for quite a while, at least maybe up until the time trial one week from today. So the head of the race, the pink jersey, the Milia Rosa could be in for quite a ride here. I think his team did a fabulous job today. They had to do some work the first half of the race, but really after that, in the last third, the sprinters teams went to the front and started trying to chip away at the breakaway. And so it gave them some time to conserve some resources, and they're going to need those resources for the next several days. So the killer pulls on pink for another day as the leader of the Giro d'Italia. After six days of competition, Coming up tomorrow, the race stays in Austria at the start. They will make the 70-kilometer transfer from the finish here in Matterholfen of Stage 6 to the start in Innsbruck in Stage 7 tomorrow. They'll traverse for a short while through Switzerland, and then it's back into Italy at the end of Stage 7 tomorrow. Also, another long day coming up tomorrow, 244 kilometers of racing here at the Giro. Can Lance make up some time? He's dropped time the last few days. But overall, the day belonged to Michele Scarpone, the winner of Stage 6. Now for Todd Gagulski, I'm Steve Schlanger. So long from the Giro.